we're going to talk about fraud. And I'm going to start by saying that you hear an awful lot about fraud being complicated and difficult to understand. You have high court judges in this country who want to take all fraud cases away from juries because he doesn't feel that juries can understand them, but want to put it to a judge only. And I'm here to tell you, rather shockingly, fraud is a dead simple crime to understand. Nothing could be simpler. Fraud is absolutely simple to understand. I tell you a lie, you give me money, that's fraud. That's it. And it's never, ever, ever anything more complicated than that. Yes, the machinations that surround the lie to try and make you believe the lie may be complicated. But let me tell you something, Enron. If 12 Texans in a jury can understand Enron, anybody can understand fraud. <laughs> The problems that you face with fraud is the size of the industry, the fraud industry. And that's exactly what it is. Because this is not just Tom down the street trying to get the towel off of Nancy, Barbara, whatever her name was. This is a business. And it's run by businessmen who are in their living doing it. And they're very good at it. There was a great case about seven years ago here. It was called the man in the middle case. I was trying to get it done for television for all sorts of reasons. It didn't work. But what it was shows how people in the banking community and in business are in denial. A guy in Scotland, young kid, 24, 25 years old, works out a way to get himself in the middle between six banks, four companies, an airline, and an embassy. You can believe that. A foreign embassy in this country. And he gets himself in the middle. He calls the bank and says, um, yeah, my name's uh, John Peters. I'm from the XYZ company. And you, you are our account manager at the bank. And I just want you to know I've taken over as deputy CFO for the company. And um, so the bank guy says, oh, is uh, Steve uh, uh, Bingo still there? Oh, yeah, Steve's still here. But he's just been moved on to another thing. So call me now when you have anything to do with it. And I, you and I will talk. And by the way, um, We've had a problem with the switchboard and the office numbers, and we've also had a problem with the firewall on the internet. I'm going to give you my private phone number, and I'm going to give you my private email. Anything you, any dealings, please just get in touch with me private. Call me directly any time of the day or night. I will take care of it. There he's calling right now. Right? <laughs> That's him calling right now. So he gives that information to the banker. Now, the banker who said, oh, Steve Bingo was, he picks up the phone and he calls the business. And he says, Steve Bingo, please. Yeah, hello, this is Steve. Steve, my name is Henry uh, Wadsworth, and I'm with such and such a bank, and I've just taken over your account. And the guy he spoke to, he now knows his name, he says he's moved on to other things, so I'll now handle your account. And I'm really glad to do this. I just wanted to cut, touch base with you. Uh, you know, at the bank, we've had a problem with firewalls and the internet, so I'm going to give you my private email address, and I'm going to give you my private cell phone address, my cell phone number, any problems you've got, call me, day or night. So he's now worked his way in between the company and the bank. And he did it about 12 times over the course of five years. He targeted, he didn't get away with, but he targeted 230 million pounds. He got away with about a quarter of it, which you can live on. <laughs> 60 or 65 million pounds, you can just about get through the week, right? And most of it's never been paid back. Most of it's never been found. But he targeted up to 230 million pounds, which would have made him the largest fraudster in the history of the United Kingdom. He used a cell phone and a Gmail address, OK? You're doing business with companies. All of those companies have direct landline telephones. If you are dealing with somebody on their cell phone, you're a fool. If you're dealing with the company, they have a phone number. So you know that you're getting through to the company. And let me say this, not only professionally, but in your life. Anybody who's got a Hotmail address, a Yahoo address, a Bingo Bongo address, no, 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 no. People in business have a Natexas.co.uk address or they've got a Barclays.co.uk address or they've got a British Airways.com address. They've got real addresses. They don't have Hotmail. 